Thank you. I'd like next to introduce you to the best freely available methane data collected nearly daily on a global scale. It's coarser resolution than some of the other sources, but its availability and spatial temporal coverage makes it an important part of any methane monitoring initiatives. My name is Stephen Ansari. I'm a principal and co-founder at Blue Raster. My background is in earth science, and for the past 20 years, I've used spatial technologies like I'm going to share with you today to understand and solve complex global problems for companies and governments around the world. We at Blue Raster are very excited about the innovations in earth monitoring tech, measuring greenhouse gases. If you're here at the hackathon, you likely have heard about the Sentinel-5P satellite, launched by the European Space Agency late in 2017. On board, it has a tropospheric monitoring instrument that we call TROPOMI for short. Today, I'm going to introduce the TROPOMI dataset, show you where to find it, and provide some tips on how to make the best use of this dataset. This platform has been delivering daily measurements of methane gas observation. It is currently the most detailed methane emission monitoring available at a global scale with a resolution of about 50 square kilometers or about seven by seven. The center platform flies 824 kilometers above the Earth. It circles the Earth in a near polar, sun-synchronous orbit, so it can cover the entire planet each and every day. Here you can see data compiled for a single day across North America. As we zoom into the Permian Basin in Texas and New Mexico of the United States, you can see the resolution of the data will not identify the particular source of methane. And there are some other limitations with cloud cover. But having a low cost daily picture of methane anomalies across the globe and within the basin is key to understanding patterns and cost effectively investigating further. Looking at the spatial temporal data graphically, you can visibly see specific event anomalies across space and time. I pointed out a few on this graph. Some last for a few days, and others are persistently showing higher concentrations of methane over time. Seasonal and monthly summaries of these anomalies invite conversations, and the analyst immediately begins to develop additional research questions. Let's drop down to the three-day lens and look at the basin over time. These are not canned reports. These are interactive maps with access to historic as well as data recorded a few days ago. We're unlocking the full potential of dashboards by including ArcGIS reference layers like this one. This empowers our users to visually see relationships and patterns across many parts of the puzzle. We can organize the analysis results using a uniform grid to provide meaningful clarity. So now you can operationalize the results in action by saying, this problem or this issue covers 600 square kilometers. I'm now going to show you behind the scenes and walk you through how we use Microsoft Azure and Esri ArcGIS Enterprise to automate the workflow. From raw data to Power BI dashboards, ensuring that the latest data is available to the dashboards is the key to making use of as well as making sense of the abundance of data. The Chipomi data is available via ESA's Open Access Hub, but the raw formats are hidden away in a binary scientific data format called NetCDF. At the Hub, you can search for the area and time of interest and download raw files for more advanced use. Using the Data Explorer, you can visually see the arced path the satellite takes as it must orbit the Earth many times to cover the entire planet each day. We will be sharing material via GitHub and Python notebooks to help others recreate our workflow. The automated workflow leverages European Space Agency's API to access data as it becomes available. From Esri, we take advantage of their rich Python API for ArcGIS. This is connected to Azure Storage to extract, harmonize, 
and combine all of these raw data sets from the satellite into a unified grid of GIS ready data with careful attention paid to the data fidelity with the source. I'm going to use the new notebooks for ArcGIS to demonstrate how we build our mosaic data set and summary reference layers that will later be used in our dashboards. Once the data is downloaded, the first step is to access and unlock the specific dimensions and attributes needed from the binary netcdf file. These comprise of coordinate pairs and methane values. But due to how Sentinel travels over the ground, measurements directly below the satellite are closer together than at the edges of each pass. We must reconstruct the specific area on the ground that represents the measurements recorded. This is so that each point properly maintains a meaningful coarseness that reflects the true uncertainty of the measurement. Here, you can visually inspect alignment and you will notice the rectangular shapes vary in size from east to west. Now we have normalized methane data over time for our area of interest. This reference layer will be key for the analyst exploring the data later on in the dashboards. For the decision maker, however, we can now overlay our summary level hexagons and derive a high level executive reference layer that more quickly brings to attention the greatest anomalies across the basin. These layers are published into ArcGIS Enterprise and would even work in ArcGIS Online. Now, let's pivot to Power BI for a moment. The magic in our endeavor is bringing together lots of data into meaningful dashboards and visualizations. Infrastructure features like pipelines and wells, production data, reported accidents, and known leaks, as well as wind data and other impactful conditions over time. Just to show you an example of integrating Topomi with relevant data, on January 3rd of this year, there was a well-documented release of methane at Hasi Masaud in Algeria. The methane plume is clearly visible in the Sentinel Chupomi data for three days. We incorporated global historic wind data from the United States National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is from their operational model archive. On January 4th, a high pressure area just to the east created strong winds out of the southwest into the northeast. We can use visually effective techniques to help our customers see wind speeds and directions, painting a more complete picture to the narrative of methane across the area of interest. Again, these are not static reports. They're live data displayed on interactive maps and dashboards. Now that the dashboards and visualizations are created and our data workflows are in operation, this brings all parts of the story under one pane of glass. We hope you enjoyed this introduction on how we're bringing a great global daily methane data set right to the decision makers using geospatial capabilities of the Esri ArcGIS platform. The single pane of glass is a data approach as much as it is a tool. We see this being applied to the data available today and taken even farther with all of the new sensors coming onto the market in the next few years. I want to thank our hosts, and thank you too for attending today. We'd love to engage in further conversations, so please reach out to us during the hackathon with any technical questions or for support. We want you to take this data into new and innovative workflows, and I look forward to seeing what is possible. Thank you.